If you are selling a home in the state of Arizona, it's important to know what closing costs are involved and what you can expect to pay as a seller. So today we're gonna to meet up with Kim at First Arizona Title to talk all about seller closing costs. Well, Kim, I'm so excited to talk all about seller closing costs because in the state of Arizona, the seller is responsible for the buying agent and listing agent broker fee. But in addition to that, there are some other closing fees with the title company, property taxes, HOA, and things like that. So I would love to go through line by line to explain to a seller what they can expect to pay on closing day. Okay, I would love to help you with Thank that. You. Thank you. I've done an example of a $500,000 sale transaction with the buyer putting 20% down, so buyer would be financing $400,000. At closing on every transaction, the seller is going to need to pay all of their property taxes current to the day of closing. We do that with payments to the county and a proration between buyer and seller on the settlement statement through escrow. And with taxes, I always like to remind sellers that you may have already paid some or all of those property taxes in your monthly mortgage payment. You will still have to pay the taxes at closing, but you're not going to pay double or more than is due. So you may get a check back from your mortgage company after closing for any overpayment of property taxes. And you're absolutely right about that. That's excellent advice. Most of the time they can expect some sort of refund from their mortgage company from their impound account. Anything that's left in there for taxes and insurance, they will get back. It'll come yes. directly to them from that lender outside of escrow after we close. Yes. And a common question we get a lot is about the owner's policy. So can you explain how that works? Absolutely. So the owner's policy of title insurance, in Arizona, the custom is that the seller pays for that for the buyer. It's a one-time premium that the seller pays through escrow, and it ensures the buyer that they have clear marketable title to the property for as long as they own it. It would cover things like liens, judgments, if somebody came out of the woodwork six months after you closed and knocked on your door and asserted a claim on the property and it turned out that their claim was legitimate, the buyer would then submit a claim on their policy of title insurance. We would pay it. So the buyer's recourse would be with our company and not with the seller. So yeah. that would be where it would benefit the seller. Yeah, so it's really protecting both the buyer and seller. Sometimes sellers may ask, well, why do I have to pay this? Shouldn't the buyer pay it? Um, but you know what we were talking about before is when that seller bought their home, the seller bought this policy for them and you know, almost on 100% of real estate transactions in Arizona, the seller does pay for the owner's policy. So it is part of the closing costs. That is correct. That it, like I said, that is our local custom. It's been the custom as long as I've been doing this and I don't want to date myself, but it's almost 30 years. Wow. Well, you're amazing. I love working with you and the whole team here at First AZ. Um, you know, you mentioned local, local policy here, and that's an important note because we're in Arizona. We're not in Washington or California. So if you're a seller watching this video and you just sold a home in Washington, it's much different here. Um, so it varies state by state. So this is Arizona specific seller closing costs. So what is something else the seller can expect to pay as part of their closing costs? The seller can also expect to pay half of the escrow fee. That is our fee to take in the documents, draft the documents, receive all of the funds, disperse all of the funds. So, and when I say disperse all of the funds, we will pay the seller's mortgage through escrow, property taxes, HOA dues, and the commission. So they just get one net proceeds check. We take all of those things out. Yeah, the title company is really working hard behind the scenes from the first day that escrow's opened to ensuring the home closes on time, that the ownership transfers and all of that. So if somebody's watching and they just have no idea what a title company does, how would you explain that to them? I kind of, we are the middleman. The seller has a lot of emotion in a transaction. The buyer has a lot of emotion in a transaction. And of course, each are represented by a real estate professional like yourself. It's important to trust your agent and their guidance when it comes to financing needs and a title company, but we're the ones in the middle without the emotions that are making sure that that transaction gets across the finish line as scheduled. Yes, yes. So, so far we've talked about property taxes, owner's policy, the title company escrow fee, and if the seller is selling a home that's in an HOA, mm -hmm. what can they expect to potentially pay at closing? 
One of the fees that they can expect to pay at closing across the board on just about every transaction is the resale disclosure fee. In Arizona, the seller is responsible for paying that fee so that the homeowners association can send out certain required disclosures to the buyer that they have to send out by law. Mm -hmm. And that fee is capped um, by Arizona Revised Statutes at $400. Yes, and I would recommend any sellers watching this to really review the HOA addendum in the contract because that will state who pays for the transfer fee if there are capital improvement fees. So it could be either the buyer or the seller and sometimes it's even split 50-50. So you guys will take that HOA addendum and then apply the fees um, to the buyer or seller on this settlement statement. And then if the seller has any HOA dues that have not been paid for while they've owned the home, they would also pay that at closing. Exactly. We reach out to the HOA, we request a statement, we receive the statement, and we collect anything that needs to be collected at closing. One thing um, that I will note, you talked about the seller, the HOA addendum. Mm -hmm. A lot of times there's confusion about a transfer fee and a disclosure fee. Mm -hmm. They really are not one and the same thing. They are mm -hmm. absolutely two different fees. So I think a lot of times when they see the settlement statement, they mm -hmm. think, oh, well, I was not supposed to be paying that transfer fee. But yeah. the, the resale disclosure fee is a resale disclosure fee. It really is very black and white. Mm -hmm. They're not one and the same. Yeah. And sometimes there could be a home warranty that may mm -hmm. be during the negotiations the buyer is asking the seller to pay for. So the, the agent can really go through the net sheet and explain what type of fees a seller can expect to pay. And if a seller has a mortgage, how does that work? Like, are the, is it just the payoff or uh, will the lender charge any interest or anything like that? So on your mortgage, you are responsible for interest to the day that the lender gets the funds. Unless certain type of loans do require interest to be paid through the end of that month. Mm -hmm. But we reach out to your mortgage company, we request the demand, and we send them whatever they say is required to have your loan paid off. Well, that's great. Uh, what are some other fees maybe that you see on for that a seller is paying at closing? Really, the commissions, they're half of the escrow fee and the owner's policy are the basic, typical, across the board um, fees. Everything else is kind of negotiated in the purchase contract. Is there anything else that you want to add? You know, actually one thing, and not about fees, but just the process in Arizona. Mm -hmm. If you're coming here from out of state, which I think about eight out of every ten buyers is, mm -hmm. um, or sellers, signing in Arizona is not the closing. We are not what they call a table closing yes, state. So you're usually going to sign your documents a couple of days prior to the scheduled closing date. Mm -hmm. So just food for thought as people are yes. planning their moves. That's just, that's one big, that's the biggest difference between yes. Arizona and everywhere no, else. That is, say. I'm so glad you brought that up. Also on closing day, it's almost impossible to determine the exact time of closing. So I like to say it could happen anytime before 5 p.m. because there are a lot of moving parts. You we're waiting for the lender's wire. We're waiting for the signatures. We're waiting to send everything to the county recorder. So that could happen anytime before 5 p.m. So you don't wanna, you know, buyers don't wanna plan their moving truck for yeah. 2 p.m. on closing day. And here's the most common question I get when I tell sellers, congratulations, your home is closed. They ask, when am I gonna see my proceeds? Ah, I can answer that very easily. Within 24 business hours of closing, we try to get disbursements out as quickly as possible. But if it is a transaction where it's, you know, 4.59 and we just recorded, we might not be able to get those out the same day, but it would be the following business day. And the seller will let you guys know if they prefer a wire or a check? Yes, we okay. give them an, an instruction form where they tell us we follow yes. their instructions. And right when escrow's opened, you guys will be in contact with the seller. They do need to fill out some paperwork with you. They also have to give you authorization to get their loan payoff and all of that. So yes. sellers can expect that. Um, but overall, you know, you guys make it look easy, right? I don't think people <laughs> understand how much work is being done behind the scenes in a real estate transaction. And it's so important to have a really good title partner on your side, ensuring that everything is running smoothly and, you know, you're, you're closing on time and yes. getting your proceeds. Yes. The importance of having a real estate professional that has a good team of other professionals in the industry mm -hmm. is absolutely crucial. Transactions, I tell people when we speak in the beginning and we open escrow, 
You'll hear from us now. You'll get some documents from us in a couple days. Then you won't hear from us so much in the middle. And in the end, it seems like the transaction comes to life again and everybody, yes. it's kind of, it gets really exciting again. Yes, and one last thing. Sellers, if they're moving out of state, you know, sometimes they think they have to be here in person to sign. Um, but you can actually sign anywhere as long as you're with a notary. Yep. So they do want to expect to sign right before closing their final documents with a notary. Um, do you get any questions on that often? Biggest thing is if geography is going to be an issue, if you're not going to be local for signing, just let your agent know or let your title company know. As long as the communication is there, we can get people signed just about anywhere. Yeah, and they can sign in advance, right? Absolutely. Not, not on closing day. So. For a seller, it's easier. They can work around your schedule. Maybe if they are moving out of state, they could sign here um, before moving, Absolutely. or they can sign with a notary just in advance to allow enough time to get the documents back because you do need the originals. We have a lot of options these days yes. to deal with flexibility in schedules, geography, things like that. One way or another, we find a way to get it across the finish line. Awesome. Well, I think this is going to be just a great educational video for any sellers selling a home in Arizona. Is there anything else you want to add? No, I look forward to meeting some of these sellers and yes. working with you. Well, thank you for all you do. You're welcome. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions on what you learned today, please reach out to us. You can learn more about our team online at GilletteGroupAZ.com. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Shannon underscore Gillette. And we'll see you next time.